married the SOB. I had it all planned out. First, he'd take over the history department. Then when Daddy retired, he'd take over the whole college, you know? That was the way it was supposed to be. Getting angry, baby, huh? That was the way it was supposed to be. Elizabeth Taylor won her second Best Actress Oscar for that role, and who's afraid of Virginia Woolf? Actress Morgan Fairchild worked with her on a television miniseries, North and South. Nick Clooney met Elizabeth Taylor when he was a teenager, never forgot that moment. And Dick Cavett got to know her very well over the years, and all three are with me now. Uh, Dick, what's your favourite memory of Elizabeth Taylor? My favourite memory is totally unlikely. I was doing my magic act some years ago at a big party, and I thought I saw someone in the audience who looked like Elizabeth Taylor. And as I was cutting my rope trick bit, doing my rope trick, I said, I've had this dream that Elizabeth Taylor would come up and help me. And this gliding, beautiful <laughs> figure came and Elizabeth Taylor was standing there. And um, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I'd got off a dreadful joke. She had to cut the rope seven or eight times and she had a little trouble. And I said, just think of it as the marital knot. And I heard later that she found that funny but didn't let me on let me know at the time uh, but she she was everything they say uh, it's a crime she did not write a book on her mm. mastery of screen acting she just knew it all and probably had knew more than 10 other actors have forgotten Burton on a show of mine once talked about how generous she was in teaching him mm. things that he didn't know imagine uh, and she was heroic and her illnesses and she was fabulous with the AIDS thing when it was not to her advantage to be so when the idiots who were in power and it was just on that subject and it, she was a uh, American she had a gutsy laugh a great sense of humor once at a thing she was standing talking with a bunch of stagehands uh, at a b benefit and they said one of them said I understand you have not been feeling well Miss Taylor how do you feel now and she said good as you can with diarrhea <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> Nick, Nick Clooney let me turn to you because uh, you know a thing or two about good-looking people in Hollywood um, what, what was your memory of meeting Elizabeth Taylor It's apparently stayed with you ever since it sounds pretty good well, the, yeah the problem is you run into it, when you start it's all cliches you know they just keep pouring out to talk about the eyes, talk about the face. I was 19 years old. I was visiting my sister Rosemary uh, on the Paramount lot. And of course, uh, Elizabeth worked for MGM, but she was working at Paramount doing a film called Elephant Walk. And the producer, Dad Asher, who was a friend of mine, asked me if I would like to go over and meet. It was a closed set. Should I go over and meet Elizabeth Taylor? Well, I fell over all the furniture getting out the door, of course, and got there as quickly as I could. And you, and you are mesmerized by it. You, you look at that face, at that moment in time, and it was paralyzing, and I was paralyzed. Uh, I was introduced, I, I stumbled over everything. Uh, finally, Dan Asher took us over to the commissary, eventually for lunch, and she, uh, one of us tossed a little off-color joke off, and she had this raucous laugh. And I said to my 19-year-old self, my God, she's an actual person. I was stunned by that. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> shocked by it. Yeah. yeah, I tell you that, you know what, I think that's been a problem for her, uh, was a problem for her for a long time. I think the critics themselves were mesmerized. You remember how she was just eviscerated by critics for many, many years who said that she was a terrible actress. And, uh, of course, she wasn't. She was a maturing actress and became absolutely wonderful. I thought, beginning with Place in the Sun, that Joan talked about a little bit earlier, I think thought, like you, Dick, yeah. that she became a superb film actress. Uh, well, Morgan, well, don't you think, part, sorry, man, it's your show. I know, I, 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 I'll come back to you in a moment, yeah. Dick. I wanted to bring in Morgan here, because you work with Liz Taylor. What was it about her that set her apart? Because there's no doubt that there's a lot of truth to this feeling today, I think, that in terms of the global impact of her death, uh, Elizabeth Taylor was probably the last of the great movie stars. Why? You know, Pierce, there was just something so special about her. Um, having grown up watching her movies, uh, it was, as uh, Carrie said, she had that star quality. When she was on the screen, you couldn't see anything else. You couldn't take your eyes off of her. And, uh, of course, the scandals, the marriages, all of those things sort of loaded up on it, too. But there was always that magnificent screen presence, a total professional, a funny lady, a nice lady, a down-to-earth lady who had her own share of problems, which sort of 
in a way, those vulnerabilities made the public care more about her, I think. The fact that she did have weight problems, that she did have sometimes the alcohol problems, that she had these different foibles in her life and yet seemed to rise above it. And Carrie also touched on uh, when they had to shut down Cleopatra when she almost died and had pneumonia and had a tracheotomy. Um, a lot of people under 30, under 40 here may not really realize how absolutely breathtaking she was and how absolutely mesmerized the world was by the Cleopatra, the scandal, the Burton Taylor entourage, the paparazzi following them everywhere. It was sort of the beginning of that whole paparazzi stakeout kind of thing that we sort of know with a lot of the younger stars now, but was insane with that. I remember when we flew on on David Walper's jet to, to Charleston to shoot north and south, and um, I was used to having a lot of the paparazzi, a lot of media attention, but I mean, we opened the door to the plane and it was madness, absolute madness. And um, she took it all with great equanimity and she was uh, lovely to, to be around on the set. I didn't actually have scenes with her, so I didn't get to work with her. But I always remember the first time I ever saw her, Burton was doing Equus on Broadway and I'd gone to see it. And the murmur went through that Elizabeth was in the audience and you're looking, looking. And finally I saw this turban. She was wearing turbans a lot back in the 70s. And uh, she turned and that face, I have to say, she was the most gorgeous woman I have ever seen in person. The screen did not do her justice. Just gorgeous, gorgeous coloring, the profile, everything about her was just drop dead gorgeous. And, and, and take, uh, take that was the first time I saw her. Uh, Dave, let me turn to you there. There's a real sense today of an end of an era. You interview some of the biggest movie stars of all time. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that? Do you feel like today we've really lost a generation? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not a plug, but I looked at a DVD set of my old shows, and there were Hepburn and Betty Davis and Robert Mitchum and Fred Astaire and Groucho Marx and Orson Welles and Marlon Miranda. And I thought when Taylor died, this may be the last of the Redwoods. Mm. The last... The smaller trees are left. We have great <laughs> actors now, of course. May I say something that may alter the tone slightly? Of course. You will agree, I'm sure, that millions of people think I'd love to have had their lives. Wow, I'd trade my dreary life for either one of theirs. I would caution people from frustrating themselves that way to think of the fact that as great, as gifted as they were and all the stuff they had, they were also two drunks, two heavy smokers, reckless with their health, <laughs> reckless with their careers, Burton dead in his 50s. And if you really envy them, you've got to be nuts. An interesting point there. I mean, Nick Clooney, your, your son is obviously a huge movie star. Um, and I've interviewed him on this show and, and talked about the pressures of fame and everything. I mean, being a huge movie star is often not all it's cracked up to be. And Elizabeth yeah. Taylor suffered a lot, actually, for her celebrity status. She certainly yes, oh, I'm sorry. I, that's absolutely true. What, they're care what uh, most of the people, including George, are very careful to point out is that they don't want to whine about that. They're in a position of uh, power. They have uh, a lot of money. They have the lives that most people want or think they want to live. And so if you feel bad about that, shut up about it, you know. Uh, just stop whining. Don't think about that. You have entered the language. Here, the, uh, as Dick just pointed out, the last big light just went out in Hollywood, that bridge to what they call the golden era. That is now gone. Everything grew from television thereafter. And uh, this, is, this is a moment that, uh, that will not come again. Nick, Dick, yes. and Morgan, thank you all very much indeed. I, well, I commend you for getting seven minutes out of the three of us so deftly. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> when, we, when we come back, uh, final thoughts on Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs>